Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, my name is Elena Estrov, and today I'm going to talk about some uh, CSP pitfalls and gotchas. So I built this talk uh, based on my experience and interaction with different people, as they want to hear. And it's mostly built on top of uh, different examples, how you can break or violate uh, CSP. Uh, so this is just an overview of uh, uh, CSP level 3 editors draft and as you can see with uh, all these green frames it's all new things in CSP tree or changes and uh, a few important things there as uh, like for example there is like back and forth on a frame source directive which is being deprecated and now it's undeprecated and uh, it's still kind of fall back to a child source, which is now deprecated with CSP level 3. Uh, and another important uh, thing is that script source now governs behavior of worker source. And uh, three new directives that's been added, but they are not defined in uh, CSP uh, spec is a block or mixed content upgrade and secure request and requires arrive for, uh, which helps a lot to improve uh, security of your web applications. Uh, in many cases, they are really convenient. Um, so let's start with the whitelist issues. And you probably, uh, if you attended a talk today from uh, Google, guys, so you probably heard about uh, whitelist and white spot. So this like, few examples why and first is uh, because of uh, JSONP for example you may have a, a content security policy like this but if you use if you have a JSONP endpoint which can be used uh, with user controlled callback function you can easily bypass it like this so CSP uh, won't help to protect you in this case uh, so another issue here with uh, if you're using a uh, shared CDN to uh, host your uh, libraries and you may have like content security policy like this where you just whitelist a uh, CDN domain name. Uh, what can happen here like some attackers might find injection uh, in your pages and uh, they might use some uh, let's say a uh, vulnerable AngularJS library and have an injection like this to uh, bypass your policy. Um, one of the things that you can improve there is to add a path uh, to your source expression widely. So not only whitelist the domain name, but add also path to where you uh, host your libraries or which libraries you're using in your project. But there is a certain issue with uh, uh, CSP and whitelisting with a path uh, because if you redirect from one domain to another domain, then path restriction will not apply in this case. So if you have like similar policy and you whitelisted uh, so libraries that you're using or your JavaScript is that you host on a CDN. Uh, in this case, if attacker can find, let's say, uh, on example.com, some URLs that will redirect uh, from uh, example.com uh, to shared CDN, and in this case, path won't be count, so uh, browser will only take will only use a shared CDN for matching in this case. Uh, so another cool thing that's been added in CSP3 and it, which is really useful is that you now can uh, whitelist uh, external script by a hash or a nonce, uh, not only inline script. So uh, let's say you, you may have a document uh, with an external script and you whitelist it by some uh, subresource integrity hash and you may use a directive uh, requires write for which might have a different values like script or style 
And in this case, uh, your script will be loaded perfectly, but uh, attacker injection like this won't work because it is not, it doesn't have a proper uh, digest that in your policy. Uh, another um, cool feature that's been added in CSP3 is for uh, dynamically loaded scripts. So sometimes in like in a bigger applications you have a, a script that dynamically load other dependencies it needs through creating uh, script elements depending on like with the browser browser user environment or country or anything else. So in this case, if you try to do something like this with uh, content security policies, this dynamic script won't be loaded because it's not white listed with a digest. But if you use uh, strict dynamic keywords in your policy, so this script which dynamically created will be automatically white listed and trusted uh, by a browser. Uh, another thing that people and developers and security people are usually missing uh, is that if you do not have an object source and you do not have a default source defined in your policy, uh, there's still a way to um, attack your web application. So let's say you cannot do a script injection, but you still can't do an injection of an object element with uh, some uh, flash that will have an access to uh, all data on a web page. Uh, another interesting attack is uh, like let's say you don't have a form uh, action directive defined in your policy and there is a still possibility that like with a content security policy like this uh, if you can't find a place to inject, let's say, form element uh, on top of some, before some form and documents that might contain some secrets like, let's say, CSRF talking values. <laughs> so in this case, browser will just kind of work um, uh, with the nested forms and the uh, second form action will be ignored. So. Uh, all this data will be just basically submitted to an attacker-controlled uh, website and you might have access to all uh, secrets. Um, another interesting thing if uh, image source and default source are missing. Uh, in this case, uh, attacker can do what, what's called a dumb mic markup attack. And uh, what it basically need is to find a page to do an injection, let's say, in some form. Uh, but the result should be one uh, quote somewhere behind a form document. So in this case, all this uh, HTML will be submitted to a tiger controlled website where it, you can just basically extract some secrets out of this markup. And uh, Another interesting thing is about uh, CSP violation due to same origin policy. Uh, for example, this happened in cases where you don't have a content security policy on all your pages. And uh, in this case, if someone, some attacker can find a page uh, where there is no CSP and he can still do um, injection attack like an XSS, uh, this gives him a uh, privileges to just basically frame or include page uh, he wants to get where he wants to steal some secrets, right? Uh, and it will work because this is a still same origin. So it, it won't work if origins are different. Uh, and I heard a lot about uh, Unsafe in line, and like when you're talking about content security policies, the first thing you you will hear or read is never use unsafe in line. But it's not kind of all black and white because in many cases, uh, if you have policies similar to this, and you'll try to uh, open a page with a browser which is the CSP level one compatible. Uh, basically, it will break a user experience 
because uh, this inline script won't be executed. You do not allow it. So you, you can still use an unsafe inline in this case and uh, do not break uh, experience for CSP level 1 compatible browsers. But other modern browsers that CSP level 2 and 3 compatible, they, they just ignore unsafe inline because nonce is here. Uh, and this is basically how we can get to a question what to do with uh, uh, all these different levels and all these different uh, support by different browsers, different versions of CSP. Uh, you can basically build uh, your system which will detect uh, user agent version and supply one or another content security policy that is you build specifically for this level compatible browsers but then you need to deal with lots of stuff like understanding all this compatibility which uh, CSP directives, directive supports and which versions of browsers and you have to build your user agent detection framework uh, on a server side to supply a proper policy you have to keep in sync all these different policies while your web application is changing and you also need to support new browsers and just basically uh, understand all the things. Uh, but there might be a better way to do this. Uh, you can just build policy and it will be one policy but it will be backward compatible. Uh, but it will be a little bit more complex and you need to understand the different uh, browsers that's compatible with different CSP versions will see the same policy differently. And, uh, you know, the guys from Google built a perfect framework that can give you understanding and better view of it. I strongly encourage everyone to use it. Uh, and it's uh, much more useful than you have to deal with three different policies. So, for example, this policy, uh, CSP level 3 browser, will look uh, like this because in the presence of strict dynamic and uh, nonce, it just basically ignores unsafe inline and uh, HTTPS endpoints. And uh, at the same time, CSP level 2 compatible browsers, it has no idea what the strict dynamic is, so it just ignores it. But it also ignore unsafe inline because nonce is present and it will lot on the script that's uh, whitelisted by this nonce. Uh, at the same time, you won't break uh, experience for CSP level 1 compatible browsers. Yeah, there still will be uh, issue with uh, security because unsafe inline uh, keyword is there and you can allow any injected inline scripts but it's in many cases it's better than just break a user experience. Uh, and just basically to sum all this up, uh, CSP is not a really a silver bullet. Uh, you need to do a lot of different things to uh, make your application secure. I just don't want to everyone to kind of get into file impression, uh, false impression of, of I have like content security policy on my uh, website, on my web application, so it totally protected. As, uh, and you, you've seen before that there is a many ways how you can still bypass uh, CSP, but there is lots of different ways to uh, improve it and make your web application safe. So. Uh, it is content security policy is probably more complicated than it's really look like when you first time read this pack or trying to play with this. And uh, as you can see, and if you can read a history of it, it's continuously evolved and uh, there is more new features that makes uh, life of security people and professionals and web application developers easier. Uh, so, look on a spec and uh, 
subscribe to web application security updates uh, and you'll get it right. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll take it now uh, or you can uh, send them by email or on Twitter. Thank you so much.